Jimmy Chang here. I'm with Andrew. He's on the Wolf Warrior X and we're going to be reviewing that today. Andrew's been putting a lot of miles on it so he can give you his thoughts on the Wolf Warrior X. We may look a little different to you guys and that's because we're sporting some new safety gear. Thank you to Demon for sending us these uh, full-faced helmets. Um, the pads that Andrew has on, we'll, we'll make a full video on this uh, safety gear as we put some time into it and get to know it. But uh, so far, so good. So we have the Wolf Warrior X for you today. It's a blend between the Mantis Pro and the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus. And what I mean by that is it's got the folding mechanism that's on the Mantis Pro, but it's got the dual stem like the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, but it's not quite as powerful as the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus. It's got dual 1100 watt motors. It does have a 60 volt, 28 amp hour battery. I was expecting this to be more torquey than the Mantis Pro, but it actually, I feel like, I don't feel, I, I'm pretty positive the, the Mantis Pro is much more torquey than this scooter. So it's like a baby wolf king or a baby wolf warrior. Um, the X, it's, it's a fun scooter, it's nimble, but we're gonna ride it around this park. And uh, at our next stop, we're gonna tell you what we like about this scooter. So yeah, I, I love the scooter that it's a more compact Wolf Warrior 11 Plus. It's 30 pounds lighter. It's got some really good tires on it. So I chose the off-roading tires, but they're more like hybrid off-roading tires. So their profile isn't quite as, as knobby. It's more of a rounded knobby. I love the Mini Motors i3 display. That's always great. I do like the lighting system, but we'll talk about that issue in our next, when we talk about the negatives as well. It's got the RGB lights that are controllable. It's got the big headlight on the front. Also has the horn, which is always great, but not the best for pedestrians, especially on the walkway that we're on right now. I would never use this horn because it would just piss off people. But dual forks are always great. Dual forks make the scooter feel a lot more solid than the Mantis. We find that most turn signals are not that bright. The turn signals on the scooter are actually very bright. They can be seen during the day, much better at night, but you can also turn them both on to create a hazard signal, or you can actually turn them both on to create an alternative signal as well. This deck is really nice and big. It's not quite as big as a Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, but it's plenty big for someone who doesn't want to go for the extreme massive scooters. It doesn't have quite as much torque as the Mantis Pro, but it does have a high to higher top speed. So the quota top speed on this is like 42, 43 miles per hour. I was able to get it up to 65.9 volts. Not quite full on here. It's over and take off. This thing's not nearly as fast. The Wolf Warrior 11 Plus. Forty through. It says 44 on the display. 45. on the display. Forty six. Forty seven. Oh, that took that bump pretty well. I was able to get it up to 47 miles per hour. On this scooter, I pretty much, whatever says on the display is the, is the speed that I'm getting on a GPS unit. So those are the things that we like about the Wolf Warrior X, but like any scooter, it's not perfect. There are things that definitely need improvement. And in our next stop, we're gonna talk about things that we don't like about this scooter. All right, 
while we're cruising around this lake on this beautiful day, let's talk about the things that we don't like about the Wolf Warrior X. The lights on the side, they're, they're really sweet looking, the RGB controllable lights, but ours came broken. The lights are pretty cool. Unfortunately, it's only working about halfway onto the strip. There's a little piece of it missing on here too, so. Cabo is going to be sending us a replacement one. It did break in shipment coming to us and it's kind of a little bit cheap plastic piece that we noticed on there. Not very strong plastic. When you tap on it, you can kind of hear it. It's kind of chingy. This is, this is not the most rugged piece. That. The Mantis Pro is much quicker off of the line. However, this does get a, top, a higher top speed at 47 miles per hour. The most pronounced thing that we've noticed Right off the bat is this rear fender rubs whenever you drop a curb or you just make a, just a small little bump on it. More rubbing. Anytime I go to do a wheelie, I always get the fender to rub. So like that right there. So some drawbacks to this new design on the Wolf Warrior X. If you like dropping curbs, uh, rubbing in the back, could be a little bit of a problem. As far as I know, we were the first to report this rear fender rubbing, and we reached out to Cabo and Voro Motors about it. Voro Motors responded with the following. In regards to the rear fender issue, I've attached a photo and video of the scooter showing what we've done as our internal fix. We aim to apply a very similar solution directly onto the production line. This is a great example of how getting these scooters into the hands of real world riders can help work out some of the kinks before the issues become multiplied and widespread. As the saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I'm pleased that Cabo and Voro took our issue to heart and that they are addressing the issue before these scooters get sent out to you guys. If Cabo and Voro's fix really does resolve the rear fender rub, the Cabo Wolf Warrior X is a fantastic package with its dual stem, great lights, and functional turn signals. Got the anti-lock braking, if you want to hear that. Yeah. Kind of gives that little purr. This is a fun scooter, I like it. It's, it's a good size. Yeah, for me, I guess the biggest bummer is the lights. And the light, uh, the lights on the side, that's what kind of interested me the most when I first saw footage of this scooter. So this is what's inside of it. I had a what fish this stuff all the way through here was kind of a big pain in the butt. Got a ton of wires over here and it's such a pain in the butt. I literally have to try to get all this stuff out of the way. So what I just decided to do was do the old splicing technique rather than the plug and play. Instead of having to fish this thing through here, it's a lot easier. This side I wired all the way through this tiny little hole where on this side you can see there's so many wires in here. There is very, barely any room. I'd have to remove the controller, remove all the stuff. I just wasn't wanting to do that stuff. So I just decided to do it the quick and easy way. But now it works. We'll show you it working now. There we go. We're back in business, guys. problem with this type of a stem. It happens with pretty much all the scooters. Zero, 10X scooter, Apollo Pro. They have the same creakiness in the in the stems. Trying to limit the creakiness. Yeah, trying to see if I can tighten these up a little bit more and get rid of that creakiness, but does it make it more does it make it wobbly though? No, it's not really wobbly. There's there's not really much stem movement, but you can hear it right now if you... All right, we've been riding around the Cabo Wolf Warrior X all day. Andrew's had it for many miles. Andrew, who do you think the Cabo Wolf Warrior X is best for? I think it's really designed for the casual rider who wants to go fast. I would think this would be great for off-roading if they could just fix that rear fender issue. Everything else is great about the scooter. I do love the speed on it. I do love a top speed of 47 miles per hour. I love the tires. I love the overall feel. I like more of a smooth ride as opposed to kind of that twitchy instant torque. 
but uh, to each their own. If you want more information on this scooter, make sure to check out our full review on gotscooter.com. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and we'll check them out, all right? Thanks for watching, and when you ride, be sure to wear your safety gear. This is the drop off. Boop, bump, bump. That's the highest speed we're gonna get going on here. It says 44. We're only at 69% battery too, and it's 44 miles per hour. Centered, 45 miles per hour is what it's stating. It's a pretty fun ride. Overall, it's a pretty stable scooter, I'd say. 44 miles per hour, that's a pretty good speedometer. I'm pretty impressed with that one.